And uh, welcome to Rocks. I'm Jay. And I'm B. And this is a bud. A bud of garlic, that and is. And we're gonna eat it right now. It's the finest garlic from the garlic company. It's a garlicky day. Thanks, Dad. You said she don't need some. You got. Oh, hello, and uh, welcome to Rocks. This is a, uh, a television show, as you can see. Yes, we're here making it in this uh, gas station here in Greenwood, Indiana. We're, uh, we're going to visit a, a state representative, actually. Yep, on the road again. I'm Jay, I'm your bartender, actually. And I'm B, I'm the editor, gas station attendant, and general uh, flunky. I'm uh, Christy Paxson, and usually I'm a tour guide, and this time, I th I'm, I'm basically the, the guide. Chauffeur. Yeah, the chauffeur type guide. So um, I'll, be, I'll be driving on this trip and- In our uh, fine rental vehicle. Don't film this. Don't film my accident. I'm just trying to forget about it. And I know you're gonna replay it over and over again to humiliate me. Yeah, it's just too bad we didn't have the camera running then. So uh, we're going here to visit this guy, uh, Woody Burton. He's uh, a state representative for, from Greenwood here. And uh, he has some things to tell you about his um, moral principles. <laughs> um, the bad news is, he's not here. Oh. Mm. He tried to call you this morning, but like at your house and at your office, but I guess it's you don't late. have a car phone or whatever. We're here at Woody Burton's house in Greenwood, Indiana. Uh, unfortunately, there's been a lot of crazy stuff going on at the state house, and, well, uh, Mr. Burton isn't here. So we're going to try to connect up with him later. Uh, meanwhile, onward to West Lafayette. Thanks, Dad. You said you don't need some. You got nothing. How's it going? Heartbreak. Feel it going on the floor. Can't stop. Until you had some more. Ah, uh, hey, could someone please tell me just what is going on here? You know? What's a rap? We're here in uh, West Lafayette at Purdue University here in Indiana. We're here at Purdue University to talk about the herb. So we're going to visit a friend of ours, Dr. Vero Tyler. Yes, my name is Vero Tyler, and I'm professor of pharmacognosy at Purdue University, West Lafayette, Indiana. Uh, so could you describe for us some of the health benefits of garlic? Certainly be glad to. Garlic has become a very popular herbal remedy in the United States today. 200% increase in sales last year, now topping $100 million. So it's not a small business. The best proven effects of garlic are those to reduce cholesterol in the blood, particularly the LDL cholesterol. There have been studies both in Europe and in the United States on that subject. Other beneficial effects of garlic include reduction of blood pressure, uh, some antibiotic effect. It's very similar in its antibiotic spectrum to penicillin, but not quite as potent. And then there have been recent uh, epidemiological studies indicating that it may be useful for cancer in terms of prevention, not for treatment, and may have some other benefits as well. Oh my God, I got a ticket! Shoot, I bet you we've only been, what, one to two minutes? Yeah. So how Let's much see. do you owe the state? Ten dollars? But you know, it's a rental car. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Hey, Try to... wait, you're breaking the law. But I'm going to put my trash in the proper receptacle, yeah, so... At least you won't get busted for littering. Oh, you yeah. ought to recycle. So I'm getting back in the car now, um, because now we're headed to Gary, Indiana, from here in uh, West Lafayette, Purdue University territory area, um, to Gary, Indiana, to break the law there. Yes.
Yes, sir. Ain't hearing that no more. No man in on the other floor. Heartbreak. Feel like my heart is gonna get a stomach ache. Hey. Feel like I gotta get something to you. Come on. Better give me some of that. in the fridge, baby. You know what I'm talking about. Baby, I need some food. Welcome to Gary. Hello, and uh, welcome to Rocks. I'm Jay. And I'm B. And this is a bud. A bud of garlic, that and is. And we're gonna eat it right now. So see, here in Gary, Indiana, it's illegal to go out in public for four hours after eating a bud of garlic. Um, and, uh, and so we're... Wait, wait, wait. wait. Well, sort of, I guess. What's that? Hi. <laughs> Wait, we, um, They're really excited. We heard that it was illegal to eat garlic and Gary. It's true. It's true, so, so what? don't fall down. Please don't fall, whatever you do. Uh, this is the ladies' room. This is censored. <laughs> oh, you're kidding. This is the ladies' restroom? I'm sorry. God. <laughs> Well, we won't be able to show this on no, TV, it's obviously. Not illegal. Well, we have here official confirmation that it is against the law here in Gary, Indiana, to go out in public after eating garlic, and we think that sucks. And, and we got this public confirmation by the uh, the employees of the Lake County Superior Court in the women's restroom. Yeah, so you know, garlic uh, is is supposedly a, an herbal remedy, um, it, uh, according to. Uh, uh, Vero Tyler, at least. Um, so it's kind of ironic that it's illegal to go out out in public for four hours after eating it here in Gary. But you know, those are kind of the the stupid laws that you find some some places in this country. And so I'm gonna break one. Oh, is it yummy? Oh, wow! It must be yummy. You just clouded up the lungs with your breath. Oh wow! <laughs> oh. Wow. <laughs> No wonder they made it illegal. They had the right idea. Break out the bud and pass it around. Well, unlike Jay, I'm gonna find me a little guy. <laughs> he took a big old fatty. But, uh, <laughs> he always here, does. Yeah. Oh God, all those kids are counting on me. Chew! Chew, woman, chew! I'm not gonna swallow it, though. <laughs> spit or swallow, I usually swallow, but in this case, ladies, I recommend spitting. Who cares if he breaks up with you? So I'm proud, I'm glad to be here on television um, breaking the law here in Gary, Indiana and eating garlic for you and with you, the home viewer. I, I, I hope that you have some garlic on hand. Break it out and eat it right now because that's what I'm doing and I'd like to feel like I'm a part of a larger movement. It's moist, oh, it's God, fragrant. Man. man, you just can't get better buds than these. In taking garlic, you can do it two ways. You either have to consume it raw, one to four cloves daily, well chewed, because the active principle is released in the mouth and is absorbed through the buccal cavity. Uh, or you can take a product that is designed to get it down into the small intestine, past the stomach, where the acid in the stomach would inactivate the enzyme that releases the active principle, Besides, if you get it down into the small intestine, then it's very quickly absorbed with practically no odor. So that's an advantage of using some of these pharmaceutical preparations that are available today made from garlic. Since we are conveniently located here at the courthouse, perhaps we should go around and turn ourselves in. So um, we've come around to the actual entrance to the courthouse. That's the old entrance we are in front of. This is the new entrance or the revised entrance. Or... Oh, something. Subject to search, oh dear. Yes. Hello. There you go. Just fine. Um, I wanted to report right away that I do have a, a bud of garlic in my pocket. And so I'll put this right here. Can you bring the camera in? Is there a camera? In? Oh, yeah. 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 Can't turn oh, it in? No, take it back allowed. to you. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? Video cameras? Oh, goodness. Video cameras aren't allowed. It's a good thing you didn't have any problem with my garlic. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, the laws change every day. We've got a new government, Republican Congress, and, and you just never know what's going to happen with these laws, you know. Maybe tomorrow you'll be breaking the law and you won't even know it. 
Hey, Christy Paxson just came out from her visit to the women's restroom. Hey, they sure were nice here in Gary. They just let me on in and yeah, let well, me they use the restroom. They didn't do that with us. They booted us with our camera and our garlic. You're kidding. No. Nope. They found it repugnant. Yeah. See, I hid my breath. I said, excuse me, I have to use the restroom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we ought to note, once again, that it is not actually against the law to eat garlic in Gary, Indiana. It's just against the law to go out in public within four hours after having eaten it. And uh, you'll notice that we are, in fact, out in public. Yeah. And we have eaten garlic, as you saw. Yeah. yeah. So, like, let's get the hell out of here before we get busted. Yeah. Gosh, so I guess with this awful breath of mine, the only thing I can do to, uh, to obscure my guilt in this law-abiding law community here is to mix a drink. So this drink that we're going to be making here is called a Gary Mary. Now this drink is of course based on the classic Bloody Mary um, and so you'll obviously need some of this stuff. It's uh, well this looks like a hip flask but it's in fact vodka masquerading as a hip flask. So uh, just pour like about an ounce of this in here. Now it's against the law to uh, drink human blood and so, so you want to add some of this stuff. This is uh, tomato juice or vegetable juice or some sort. Now this is V8 but don't get confused. This is not an endorsement. So uh, just add this, this. Now of course Gary, Indiana is known widely as the crime capital of Indiana um, but there's a reason for that. It's, it's of course because, uh, because um, they've got these stupid laws about garlic and uh, and so with that in mind you'll want to add your last ingredient this stuff some of this raspberry um, flavored liqueur you may be wondering why raspberry flavored liqueur well you know raspberries are red and um, violets are blue and I'm a drunkard and so are you so cheers the Gary Mary Wow, it's, it's uh, surprisingly better than you might um, expect given um, my general incompetence and stupidity. Remember, um, rinse out your glass when you're done. What about the FDA regulations uh, regarding medicinal herbs and garlic in particular? Do they do more harm than good? Probably 550 herbs are available commercially in the United States today. And probably of those, there are maybe uh, 80 that in my uh, research on the literature, particularly the European literature, where these things are highly studied, uh, are, are safe and effective products. The problem with researching them in the United States is that it's not economical in this country because the FDA requires so much of an investment to prove them safe and effective as a drug that nobody's willing to make that investment, which might run up as high as $350 million per item. And the problem is that these herbs have been used for a hundred or a thousand years and you can't patent them. So you have no market exclusive right on them. So I invest my money to prove that uh, garlic is a safe and effective drug and uh, I prove that and you can go ahead and sell it without recovering your research costs. So it's kind of a catch-22 situation in this country because of the requirements of the Food and Drug Administration. Um, Christy? Yeah? Um, according to uh, that speedometer there, you're uh, exceeding the, the federally mandated speed limit. Fuck it! Help me! They want to beat me up! All I do is get picked and then squashed! So how much do they pay you to do this? They only pay me about $4.75. <laughs> wow, that's great. And is it hot in there? It's real hot in here. Wow. So, we're sitting here and it's time to load up a press. This is a garlic press. It's one of the many ways that you can eat garlic. So this is uh, some of the garlic that you would normally buy around here in Indiana. Uh, this, is, this stuff is fairly common around here. As you can see, it's kind of, uh, I, I'll break off a clove. It's kind of uh, shriveled and dried. So this is the stuff that you would like normally buy around here. If you're really lucky, you'll be able to get stuff like this. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Yay! Yeah, this is the best kind of marijuana that you can buy. <laughs> I mean garlic. <laughs> Gosh, so here I sit 
with this garlic press filled with this great garlic. And you know what I'm going to do with it? Tell us, Jay! I'm going to eat it. You're a madman. <sighs> uh, uh, uh. Oh! Mmm. Mmm. Get any? Mmm. Wow. Mmm. Yum. Good. Wow, I can smell it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rocks. You can almost smell the buds. Of garlic. Well, if you've got any garlic at home, we can only encourage you to do the same. <laughs> Thompson chain reference. Chain reference Bible. This was the deluxe Bible you could possibly get back when I was becoming a Christian. This was the Rolls Royce of Bibles. You were a Christian? Kind of off and on throughout life, till I finally just wised up and said no more. Absolutely no more. I'm not going to play with it anymore. No more. I'm going to put it up. Don't play with this at home, kids. Dangerous. <laughs> You'll get burned. All have turned aside. They have together become corrupt. Their deeds are vile and there is no one who does good. Both their minds and consciences are corrupted. They claim to know God, but by their actions they deny Him. They are disobedient and rebel against you. They put your law behind their backs. They commit awful blasphemies. Everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness. For rebellion is like the sin of divination and arrogance like the evil of idolatry. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for that the day of the Lord will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed and the man doomed to destruction. The unrighteous know no shame. The unrighteous know no shame. So, I guess we're going back to Greenwood now, and uh, I, think, I think they're arriving in Greenwood about now. See, they wouldn't let me come, so in protest I just said, well, I'm going to start me a fire then, since you're not going to take me up there with you. I can stay here and come up with my own segment. I don't need your damn Greenwood to Lafayette to Gary, Indiana. Well, we finally made it here to Greenwood, Indiana, where there's this giant uh, big mound of earth, as you can see. A lovely place. My hometown, actually. I grew up here. Well, this is going to be a new subdivision. Seems like they're putting up a new subdivision here every day. The reason that we're here is because we're going to meet a very important person. That's right. State Representative here in Indiana, State Representative Woody Burton. We've got an exclusive interview with him, so watch this. Okay, I'm Woody Burton. Uh, I'm State Representative since 1988. Um, I represent about two-thirds of Johnson County and one township in Shelby County in the Indiana General Assembly. Okay, could you tell us about this uh, House bill that you sponsored, House Bill 1081? Uh, last summer, uh, a TV station in Indianapolis contacted me and asked me to come down and view some videos. They had been going into parks in Indianapolis, and there was a lot of sexual activities going on in public parks in full view where children could see it where they were playing and things of that nature. And uh, they asked me if I would sponsor legislation to try to clean that up and, and try to prevent that from happening in public parks. So we researched and, and talking to some private in some other counties, we thought that what would be the, the appropriate thing would say that the second time they're convicted of this type of uh, crime, that they would spend 30 days in jail. We're not doing this to put people in jail as much as we are doing it to create a deterrent for people to conduct that kind of activity in a public park or any other public place. This is not a, um, a homosexual or a streaker activity. This is an activity that goes on where uh, uh, there may be solicitation in restrooms, there may be people having sex in the cars, it could be any type of thing, and it could be heterosexual, homosexual, it could be anything. But if you've got your kids down there playing, uh, you know, having with your family, we just don't think that's appropriate. If they want to do those things, they can go rent a room somewhere or go home. Uh, so that's, that's, that's what it's intended to do. 
Yep, it's a hard climb, but a man breathes free here at the top of this dirt mound here in Greenwood, Indiana. And we're here to discuss some very important matters. I have a very important file here of some very important papers that are um, relevant to the issues that we are discussing. And here we have, in fact, my arrest record. That's right, my arrest record. I'll read from this arrest record for you. While in the drive between the Hyper and the Art Museum, uh, that's on the IU campus, I saw a subject later identified as Barton Paul Everson. That would be me, B for short. Running down the sidewalk that leads north toward 10th Street next to the Hyper Field. Mr. Everson was not wearing any clothing. I pursued Mr. Everson and apprehended and arrested him on the sidewalk just south of 10th Street. Mr. Everson was transported to IUPD where his photograph and fingerprints were taken and he's read his Miranda warning and stated he would answer any questions. Blah, 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 blah. Charged with indecent exposure. So, yes, it's true. I committed an act of indecent exposure and um, was, in fact, found guilty of that. In fact, I think I, I pled guilty. I, I don't know. It's, it's all, the memory is kind of hazy now. But luckily, through the miracle of video, we can relive that moment um, right now. Uh, you'll see some video footage here that was taken on the scene of this crime. Um, of course, the biggest crime you'll probably notice is my bad haircut, but uh, try to ignore that and just concentrate on my flapping genitals. <laughs> Here he comes! <laughs> At, at that time, I made a statement to my probation officer. Uh, I don't know why I said these things. Looking back, it seems kind of silly, but um, this is what I'm quoted as saying. For a couple of days, I'd thought about the fad of 20 years ago streaking. I thought it would be fun to do something like that. I thought it might stir things up a little bit and that the students would go crazy. I stood on the north porch of Ballantyne Hall with only a pair of shorts on. A friend of mine had come with me because I told him I didn't want to lose my clothes. I dropped my shorts and he picked them up. I began running towards 10th Street. About halfway there I got tired and started walking. This is all true. At that time a police officer came up behind me and arrested me. I'm standing there handcuffed behind my back uncomfortably as the officer stands on the side of 10th Street. Cars passing by and more and more people seeing my nakedness. Why, you might ask, why, is he just, why did he parade me around in front of all these people? Well, the simple fact of the matter was that his walkie-talkie was broken, so uh, he had no way of communicating with his fellow officers and, you know, getting me to the station. So, well, he just had to stand there on the side of the street until a police cruiser randomly passed by. What? One interesting footnote. After I got arrested here, it says on my arrest record, while pursuing Mr. Everson, I dropped my mini-mag flashlight and upon returning to recover the flashlight, I was unable to locate it. Approximate value of flashlight is $20. So I had to pay for that. I also had to pay some fines and uh, some court fees and do some probationary work uh, or public service stuff. Now, because I have a bad back, I couldn't spend all day picking up trash on the side of the road. Poor me. Instead, I ended up getting um, stuck over at the local community access station doing television production. And that's how I got messed up in this whole television biz. In fact, if I hadn't broken the law and run across the Indiana University campus naked, I probably wouldn't be talking to you right now. Now, we've got some questions here that we're asking people to, to respond to on video. Yeah, I've experimented with it, and I don't know, it's nothing devastatingly harmful. <laughs> I mean, booze is a lot worse for you, I would think. Yeah, I have, and uh, I think uh, it's cool, it's real relaxing, and I don't know, it's just, it's cool. Okay. <laughs>
Uh, I don't want to answer that question. <laughs> oh, about 30 or 40 times. Okay, and you like it? Oh yeah, I love it. But, okay. you know, I have to take urine tests all the time, so I can't really indulge anymore. Yeah. I think that would be a little bit too confining on a camera to admit right now, but... Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah. I like to abstain from that question. <laughs> yeah, I'll go ahead to try yeah. it. Yeah. Actually, I'm not a frequent user, to be perfectly honest, yeah, but, yeah. you know, yeah, I've done it before. It's great. Yeah? In fact, I'm on it right now, so I okay. like it a lot. Great. Well, thanks for watching this episode of Rocks. Um, I hope that you realize that while garlic is a great thing, we had a, another purpose here. We also wanted to say that there's a lot of stupid laws out there and that um, ultimately, well, let your conscience be your guide, like Jeremy Cricket said, or Jiminy, whatever that. Never mind. Bye. Stop, sing the song, even though it seems to go on and on and on and on. Sessionville, how you playing it still? Can't give it up, going for another thrill. Ah, oh, get on down, get all the way downtown, and take the L train home. The Food and Drug Administration, of course, has provided manufacturers the operation to, or the opportunity to evaluate uh, their products if they wish. But most manufacturers did not submit data because they, uh, uh, it was just too expensive and there was no patentability. So one of the products for which no data was submitted as a, uh, as a drug was prune concentrate or prune juice. Now everyone in the United States, perhaps the whole world, knows that a lot of elderly people consume prune juice to uh, maintain their regularity. Sure. And it works, and I've got a 100-year-old mother-in-law who uses it regularly. Probably has used it for 50, 60 years. But because they did not submit data, then the FDA classifies those products in a to-be-studied category, and if no one submits the data, then they go into a category labeled unsafe and ineffective. So by FDA standards, prune juice, which as I say is widely known as a mild laxative, is an unsafe and ineffective product. I tell my mother-in-law that every time she buys that prune juice with the intent of using it as a laxative, she's violating the food and drug regulations. And she says to me, she just doesn't care. <laughs> <laughs>